Welcome to Simply Caroline, a podcast dedicated to women empowerment where we will discuss a bunch of different subjects such as life, parenting, love, business, money, relationships, healing, recovery, addiction, entrepreneurship, and so much more. A podcast I'll do my best to keep simple, fun, and relatable and bring you tools to help you better your life. So thank you for being here. And here's your host, myself, Caroline Blanchard. Hello, everyone, and thank you again for being here this week. I have a great friend, a great person, an amazing soul as a guest. She is Faith Gallatin. She is a life alignment catalyst. Hi, Faith. Hi, Caroline. Thanks for letting me be on here. So My I pleasure. Know <laughs> Thank you for being here. And uh, you know that I, I have to admit that your title is not easy for a French person. <laughs> I had to concentrate. So let's start with the first question. Describe your title. Yeah, well, that's where I kind of came up with a life alignment catalyst. It, it was life construction catalyst. I'm like, that's not quite exactly right. So I don't believe I'm a life coach. I think a life coach is great, but everybody talks about that. For me, when I work with people, the catalyst comes from, I really intend in every conversation to move people, I hope and pray to move them just a little closer, a little faster to where they're supposed to be. So if I can just add some inspiration, add a piece of truth, a, an idea, whatever in the conversation that I feel is my personal mission of why I'm here. Then the whole life alignment piece is I feel like when we are in alignment with our values, each one of us, if we know what our values are, we know what our gifts, what our talents, what our purpose is, and we're aligned with that, that is where we are truly, yeah, going to work from our hearts and we're going to be the most successful and the most productive and the most amazing, you know, like contributor to society that we can be. But I see that many people can't find that alignment. And so to me, that's the piece of where what I feel like I do pulling from what I've experienced and what I've seen and just trying to ask questions and help people move forward is hopefully to bring them into alignment. And as we have talked before, I do some energy work to help maybe move some of those blocks that are stopping really understanding and getting into that alignment piece. So for me, if I can be a catalyst to help people align their lives, that's amazing. That's an honor to be a part of that. So that's what I call myself. <laughs> and you're doing it amazingly well, by the way. But, um, you know, talking about alignment, it seems like it's such a simple thing. Like people will tell you, well, yeah, if you want to have success or be happy or whatever, you need to align your head, your heart and your body. And you're like, OK, cool. <laughs> I know what to do. <laughs> But it's not that simple. And no. I think that the very the, the core to all of this is to even start working on alignment. You need to know what you're aligning yourself with, right? Yes. And that's where I think, um, you know, it's, it's a piece of really who are you and what is important to you. Each one of us have different values. Each one of us come from a different place. Each one of us have had different experiences. And I feel like, you know, I mean, I feel like I'm getting old with the gray hair and all that, but all of my experiences have fed into and helped me understand more about me. I also have had to be really aware of that. And that's, I think, one of the craziest parts that I feel like in our societies today, as we look around, people don't seem to be becoming aware of who they are they totally watch everybody else and they tell you all about what everybody else is doing and it's all about doing and whatever and seeing and who's got the car and the house and the dog and the kids and the da -da 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 -da. that's not who a person is that is what they have around them and that's the part i feel like is that we get so distracted by all of that it's like who are you right and a number of years ago I was challenged to write a personal mission statement and the personal mission statement was about who I was. Could not have a role, like you can't say you're a wife, a daughter, a sister, a CEO, no roles. You can't write about any other person. You can't write about what you do. It's about who you are. And I think, well, 
it took me a good six months, I'm going to say, of kind of writing a statement till I even got to sort of where I was. And for me, I focused on that word catalyst that came, kept coming back up. And the thing about if you can understand who you are, your the essence of you outside of the trappings, all of a sudden, then you can bring to all those other things who you are. And so that's where for me, like I speak of being a catalyst, that's a driving force for me. So I'll be having a conversation with somebody and I'll be going, is there any little piece that I can bring them that will help them? Is there any little thing I can say to encourage them? Is there any, cause that's me, that's my essence. And that's what I feel like I'm really called to be. So then when I'm talking to somebody, I'm not all like worried about, am I comparing or I'm, I'm trying to listen really hard to them. And I'm trying to listen to, can I connect in some way? And it has changed the flavor of my conversations because now I'm coming from authentically who I am trying to connect with authentically who they are. And that's where I think you and I have really connected on that level, Caroline, which has been so wonderful because now we're really talking about us connecting, you know, heart to heart. And we don't have to be doing the same things. We don't have to even be in the same arena or whatever, but we can be there journeying together moving forward. Okay. That was a really long, piece of it but that to me is where people get so distracted by everything around them and they try to be somebody else or they try this thing or they do they don't know who they are and i feel like our kids the younger generations really have not had that in so many ways and so they're all trying to find the success that somebody says they're supposed to have and you know they get done with school saying they're like i hate my job i don't want to be in this what am i supposed to do it's because they haven't found who they truly are and where they truly come from no, and social media is a huge, huge, um, you know, as much as it's a blessing because you keep in touch with certain people and have access to classes, information, distractions, entertainment. Yes. <laughs> it's also a big con because I look at my kids, you know, and if I look at my daughter who's 21 versus my daughter who's turning 14, there's only seven years difference. But the, so, the, the social media have changed so much in that seven years that my 14 year old really thinks like that Charlie D'Amelo or whatever her name is, who's making more than the most paid CEO in the States. Um, you know, she thinks that's the way to go. And it's just because she's an influencer. So it's now kind of like almost a career subject for them. Like I'm going to become an influencer, but an influencer of what? And that's the danger yeah. that I see is that <clears throat> they don't even know who they are and they think they will influence someone. Um, and let's keep it real, like these are exceptions. Um, and it's funny because when I was hearing you, <laughs> I almost started sweating in anxiety when you said, <laughs> I had to write a statement on who I was and you can't use titles. And, and I'm sure I know who gave you this, this assignment yeah. because I think I got it around the same time and I never completed it. Because uh, I was also in a phase of my life where, for me, it was difficult. I could always say that I was a mom, I was a business builder, but me, as a person, I was starting my recovery when I was given that task. So it was almost impossible to just say who Caroline really was because it's the race to trying to be like everybody without necessarily wanting to be, like I've always wanted to be different than everybody since I'm little, but you have this unconscious race of like, oh, what is she doing to have her business uh, successful? What is he doing? And you start, you know, taking all the trainings and all the webinars and God knows that now it's like, I don't know about you, but me and my emails, I get hit with at least two or three webinars a day. So I could yeah. spend my life you know, taking webinars and it's all mm -hmm. webinars that brings you to another longer course. And of course, it's all things that you need <laughs> to be more successful. So how do you, you know, because you always have like the wise word, how do you sort through all of that? Well, and that's where I honestly, in the last two years, I have tried to connect with people one on one instead of doing social media. I have even close friends who go, well, you saw my Facebook post. And I'm like, no, I didn't. Because you know what? That used to be, we didn't have social media. I am old enough to know that. And the thing is, is that for me, I would rather pick up the phone or have a direct to direct text to say, how are you? What is going on? Tell me about it. Because then 
there's a relationship that's built from that. Being a friend on Facebook, you know, sure, you can stealth watch everybody in the world. And so, I mean, sometimes I do that a little bit, but I have pulled away from it because I'm like, I really want to concentrate on the people that are most important to me. So talking about our kids being influences, influencers, we all are. The thing is, we do not have to influence 10,000 people to be significant. And so for me, I've kind of pulled back. I'm like, I'm going to connect with the people that are most important, the people who align with where I'm going, what I feel like I'm called to. And it's very interesting because there's a realtor I saw recently who his Facebook, his Facebook reach is 300 people. You're like, how the heck is he successful, right? He's in this little town, but he's got a little niche. He has a lot of fun with his posts. Every single post reads, reaches two to five times the people because everybody shares it and he has blown up his business. So this is the piece, I think, of where we want to be significant. I agree. I think every one of us, Caroline, is like that. We want to be significant, but we think we have to be huge. No. It needs to be like right here, right now. So for me, I really pulled back and I've also the whole webinar thing. Oh my goodness. So tired of that. The thing is they say we need it. Do we need it? How many webinars have we watched and not implemented what we've learned? A lot. And I remember somebody saying once he was from radio background and he said, you can listen to the radio all day long, but you're never going to make money until you're broadcasting. Mm -hmm. So we can take in and take in and take in, and but until we're broadcasting out, we're not getting our voice out there. Nobody's really connecting with us. And if we want to be successful, and all of us need to make money in some way, so somehow we do have to have a voice. We need to speak up. We need to bring our truth to the world. And that is where people will connect with us. So even if it's just, you know, in a job that you have and, you know, you maybe you're, you know, even being an ad admin, you know, or whatever. And you're, con but when you talk with people, if you're bringing what you have to the table, that's where they connect with you. That's where they want to work with you because they work with somebody that they know, love and trust. And we've all heard that. Right. So I think that that's where we tend to have this, all this, this consumer, like so much is coming at us. We need to start saying no. I agree. <laughs> that's actually what I started to do because at some point I got lost in it. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I had people sending me webinars and, oh, my goodness, you need to take this, this. And the only thing that it brought me was to be exhausted and to exactly. actually lose who I really was. Because, you know, ultimately they will all try to sell you their system. So mm -hmm. some you will identify to some parts of it mm -hmm. and some not. But watching a person and being like, oh, I should follow what she's doing because she's so successful. Let's take Oprah for an example. Yeah. You know, if I say, well, I want to be as successful as Oprah, so let's do what she did. Well, you won't get to where she is because it's on the same timing. You don't have mm -hmm. the same past. You know, there's a lot of events that brought her to where she is at and exactly. that makes her talk the way she talks with, you know, mm -hmm. the wisdom she has. So these are all things that you can't really learn. You can learn a lot of strategies and techniques to, to perfect yourself or to improve mm -hmm. yourself, but you can't become someone else. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like, you know, that's one thing that I like about your tagline. You're really like, you need to be you and you mm -hmm. need to do it from the heart. Yes. And that, in the end will bring you success and that is a, a place i think that a lot of us get get lost in whether you admit it or not you know because i know i'm admitting it but i know I'm, I'm far from being an exception i know some very high you know high position people that feel the same way mm -hmm. you're sitting in your office and you're always like well what is she doing why am i not exactly where she is because first of all you compare your insides to someone's outside what they're posting or or the results or the bank account um but we were talking that pre-interview everyone has their own definition of success mm -hmm. and if you can identify who you really are that's the start to identifying what's success for you right mm -hmm. yes exactly and I, I mean an example um a good friend of mine she is a traveling nurse around the world internationally she lives in 400 square feet tiny little rent because that's what she has here as her base, right? But she goes around the world. 
she doesn't need to make much money because she doesn't have any cost of living. Mm -hmm. And she is so successful. She loves what she does. She's passionate. She's been around the world. She's been in third world countries. She's been, I mean, she's been everywhere. That is who she is. And that's what she brings. And when you meet her, I mean, she's just got this amazing heart. You can imagine what kind of person she is. But, you know, like other people look at her and go, you know, here you are in your 60s and you don't even own a house. Like, what's your problem, right? She is completely free to do what she feels that she needs to go do. And I look at that and I just am in admiration that she hasn't bought into what everybody else has told her, right? Each one of us does have a definition of success, but have you stopped to write it out? Have you stopped to think about what is your definition? You know, and as the old adage of about how I climbed the ladder to success and realized it was on the wrong wall. I think so many people have done that. Well, I'm going to go and do this because this is what everyone tells me I'm good at, or this is where all the jobs are or whatever. And there are a lot of people who have the golden handcuffs chained to jobs that they don't do well, really. They don't like. They just are doing it because they have to be doing it. And I would encourage people to look and go, what is my definition of success? Is it really the big house, the big car, the big whatever? Because there's a lot of people who are living with that that are this close to bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. And the whole it's a house of cards. And I guess to me, I just want to blow the whistle on that. You know, I want to call the bluff on the house of cards and say, don't do it. Build a foundation of where you know where you're going to. And the hard part about this is you may have to change your friends. That I've had to do that. Part. It's a hard part. And I've had to do it a few times. And it's, you think, oh my goodness, these are the people who are around me, right? What you don't realize is they're not supporting you. And if you're willing to walk away, you're going to find friends that meet you where you are now. And that helps you move up that ladder, the ladder you want with people that are going to support you in that. It's very scary, but I guess that's the part again, is if you know who you are, if you know the essence of who you are, you can hold true to that. Because if you know who that is and what you're bringing, you're going to be so successful. Nobody, you know, I love the line, you know, if you're your best you, you have no competition because Caroline, you are the only Caroline that can be you. I am the only faith that can be me. Nobody else can be like me. Don't even try. And this is where we just need to go be who we are. And yes, I love what you said about we compare our insides to somebody else's outside. And that's where, I mean, I have another, I would think I was telling you the story about a good friend of mine who she, I saw her go through a really tough time and she felt like her life, it was all falling apart and she didn't feel good about things. And she was the most amazing person who really touched people's hearts. And she um, had contracted a brain tumor and died 11 months later. And I went to her memorial service mm -hmm. and they kept bringing chairs in. I swear there was over 750 people in the middle of a weekday at this lady's memorial service. And it was people from all different parts of her life. And I'm just getting teary thinking about it. She was so successful because she was herself and she cared about people as she was. And I saw her insides and I didn't judge her for her insides because I realized she was a real person. And her outsides that people saw, I mean, there was her insides and outsides, they were aligned. She was living her true life. And I looked at that and I went, wow, this is an inspiration. She probably did not ever think that that many people would show up. But that's who she influenced. And that's a big part of like, you know, think about what do you want to leave as a legacy? Yeah. And uh, actually, someone was telling me that yesterday we were talking about careers and this and that. And I was talking about my dad, you know, his last words mm -hmm. were not, I wish I had made more money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was really like, I wish I had spent more time with my family. Um, you know, he was extremely successful in the eyes of, you know, society ranks and all of this money <laughs> and all of this. But for him, he still felt like he, he should have spent more time with his kids. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, success has so many different layers, but I think that ultimately, and I started putting that on my dream board like 
a while ago and people thought I was weird but I think it's just because sometimes I don't filter enough and I don't you know I just share too much but I just sat on my board happy mm -hmm. and it was like what you're not happy uh you know you have a husband a house and a and it was not that I was in a huge depression or whatever, you know, but when you have this thing inside of you that you don't even know what could fill it because mm -hmm. you're like, ah, you know, yeah, I got there and meh. <laughs> and I got there and meh. and, you know, mm -hmm. you eat the cake and you're like, sure, it was good. But, meh. you know, I was a lot like that when I stopped drinking, everything was blah and that was normal. It was part of the process. But for me, being happy and healthy and i'm you know i'm not just talking uh cancer free for me the biggest thing is mental health mm -hmm. and everything that goes on in there when you start controlling really your mental health and your happiness that is for me the greatest um you know richness no that's not a word yes no, that's a great word i don't that care if it's right or not yes so that's and the that that you can have it is. And that is really, it really comes back to choice, right? Happiness is a choice. Happiness is not an emotion. Emotions are great. Emotions, <laughs> I've always learned that emotions, I, they come, I let them flow through me. Because the fact of the matter is good, bad, and different. They're going to come and I just let them flow. But there are choices and happiness is truly a choice. How am I going to look at this situation? Whatever comes at me, it's like people talk about traumas, and you've heard me say before, Caroline, I'm, to me, traumas are an incident. How you respond to them create trauma mm -hmm. or simply a learning experience that you move forward from. And the same exact experience can be completely different in people's lives because of how they choose to walk into it and how they choose to respond. So happiness, you know, it is the precursor to success. Because if you really know what you want in success and you have chosen that that is your path and you stay on that path that's from your heart, you are going to be happy. You are going to be fulfilled because you are pursuing your own path, your own journey. And I think you're going to find a bunch of people coming and cheering you on. Their path may be alongside, not the same, but that doesn't matter. Because that's where too, you know, you think about people who they're so competitive, right? I'm really don't like competition. I never am going to compete other than to try to be better myself from day to day, right? Because I don't like that pitting people against each other. I would rather say, how can I help lift you up and you help lift me up? And mm -hmm. we're on different ways of going, but you support me, I support you, whatever it is. Again, it's the whole catalyst piece. How can I help you get closer to your dreams a little faster? then you know we all rise with the tide that's what it really is about but you got to have those relationships you got to have talking to each other you got to not be comparing not be comparing and i want to add that <clears throat> like you said you really need to do it from the heart because mm -hmm. like you said like how can i help you and you help me but if while i'm helping you i'm only thinking about okay what is she going to do for me um it doesn't come from the heart mm -hmm. and you know it's it, it doesn't create the energy and the flow that you actually want. So you can do that all day long. It's not going to work. No, and at some point in time, it's going to totally backfire on you. And that's what I've seen. I've seen people, you know, they climb their way to the top. You heard that said, you know, and it's usually because they've used somebody else for some means that they need. Mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter is we've all had that done to us. Every single one of us have had that happen somewhere. And it is energetically very bad for everyone. And it also leaves huge scars that we have to deal with later on. And so to me, it's like, quit doing that. Just see how you can help each other. And I mean, nobody's perfect, but if you can change that perspective, it makes a huge difference in who you're going to work with and how it's going to go. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. And I think that, you know, um, all along, we've been talking about how to grow your business and grow yeah. yourself as a person, but we didn't give any strategies. We didn't give any, you know, five steps or whatever. I think that the one step is do it from the heart. And, you know, when you really do it from the heart, it just starts shining and oozing out of you mm -hmm. because it's authentic and it's real.
And that's not something you can fake. That's not something you can buy. That's not something you can create. Mm -hmm. Yes, sorry. You can create it. It's not something that you can fabric fabricate, you know, right. it has to be really done and live. And for me, like I had a few steps in life where I completely backed up or not always completely, but I took steps back mm -hmm. to really just recenter and say like, wait mm -hmm. a second, how did I let myself go that far on the right or on the left or whatever? And it's important to do that. And I think mm -hmm. that every single year when we do our, you know, and mm -hmm. we should do it more than once a year, but at least when you do your yearly goals, you should also reevaluate. Is it still me? Mm -hmm. Is it still in line with me? Because also your definition of success can change, you know, from one year to the mm -hmm. other. Like I'm sure your friend, when she was diagnosed, her, her priorities changed. And of course, now we're going to the extreme when you know you're, you're, you're towards the end, right. your priorities change, but you can also have a bunch of enlightenment during mm -hmm. your year that will be like, hey, is it still really who I am? Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. I find too that sometimes we, we start that we're in a business, we're on a business path and we have our business goal, which is quite often attached to a financial goal, mm -hmm. because in business, that's how you know if you made it or the number of followers or this or that or that. But, um, you know, you start by putting your personal goals and then you set it into your business. But then a bunch of things will happen during the year mm -hmm. that will push you away from that path or towards the path of your mm -hmm. money goal, but away from who you are. And it's really important to always have people like you <laughs> in our life to say, um, are you mm -hmm. still aligned? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely true. And that's the part. Yeah. Building a business, you know, it's. It's not, I mean, I've heard so many times, 80% is, is in your brain. It's, to me, it's also in your heart. Who you are, and if you think about who you do business with, it's people that you connect with, right? Mm -hmm. And if you talk to somebody and you're like, eh, just don't really connect with them, they're just not really my people, you don't do business with them, especially, you know, think about an insurance agent, even a banker, um, you know, a, a, you know, sure, coach, a webinar leader, you know, I mean, I've heard, listened to webinars and in five minutes, I'm listening to the person, I'm like, I turn it off because I'm like, no, I can't deal with them. I just don't, there's not something there, right? So that's where if, again, it's finding your tribe, it's finding who you are, who those people are that you are going to connect with. And again, it doesn't have to be the world. But it makes a huge difference in the business because then also you're going to be doing it whoever whatever you're doing if you're connecting with who you're connecting with it's going to be easier it's going to be more fun everybody's going to make more money the whole thing is going to be way easier and i agree with you caroline that there needs to be a constant kind of awareness take a look at it and if you need to step back and you need to change direction do it that's all I can say is do it. Take the courage and be honest and true with yourself and say, this is what I need to do. And sure, there's a rough patch, but we can all get through it and we can make something better. And I have stepped away from jobs that I knew I was going to build the business. I mean, buy the business. Cause, and if I didn't own the business, I couldn't change things about it. I have quit. And people have told me I'm crazy, but I'm like, I can't work here anymore because it doesn't align with who I am. I wasn't able to do my job in the best way. Right. And out of that came much better experiences. Sure, there was transition and da, 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 but it's also grown me, right? And that's where I was telling you, I think I'm on my 13th or 14th career. I've done all kinds of careers, you know. Um, part of that has just been fun. It's been working with people. That's what it is, but just trying to be more and more of who I am. So that's my encouragement to everybody listening. Hopefully you found something here that can be a little nugget to move you forward. <laughs> Well, you know, you know what you described for me is the definition of courage. And mm. um, I'm like you, I had quite a few careers. And that's not only why I'm saying you're courageous, <laughs> but uh, I, I've always been like that. So it's not a new thing. Mm -hmm. But when I was younger, I was always seen as unstable. Mm. And, um, you know, she can't commit to one thing. And because back in the days when i started working you were you started a yeah. job and you were in it for like until they gave you the gold watch and and i had so much fear and anxiety inside of me 
because every three years or so, or when I would discover the company more and more, it would mm -hmm. just like, I would realize, okay, I've made my time. Now it's time for me to move on to something else because clearly you grow in two or three years. Um, so I was always like, oh my gosh, the years are passing, the years are passing. What am I going to do? Who's going to give me my gold watch? And, you know, when I hit 30, I was just like, that's it. I can't celebrate 40 years anywhere. And then when I hit 40, that's it. I can't hit, you know, it's like you start seeing time rolling mm -hmm. until I finally accepted. I'm not made to be at the same place. I'm really embracing the fact that I you know, I draw from everywhere, everywhere that I am. And who knows what I'm doing now? Maybe I'm going to do it for the rest of my life. It's actually been the longest seven years, um, my longest relationship. But, you know, I'm not, I don't fear or have anxiety anymore about the fact that I need to stay in there. Mm -hmm. Like I made a commitment to myself and I made a deal with myself that I'm going to stay as long as it fits. Mm -hmm. And yes. yes, like you said, when you change things, when you when you move, it's scary. There is a transition part. People, some people would ju will judge you, but who cares? Because the one who judge you quite often are not the ones who are happy in their job. Because no. honestly, the most successful people in my life that, that I know are the one in my life who never judge and always were like, good go for something bigger or go for something better for you. So mm -hmm. yes, so be you. And I, I love that, you know, basically what <clears throat> I said, I would, <clears throat> I said I would lose my voice today. Sorry. Uh, I shouldn't have because I attracted it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but you know, it comes with a cold sometimes. So, oh, um, but what I like about also, you know, your premise is so much the same as mine is authenticity. And you live it so well, and you seem so at peace and happy. And, you know, describe a bit what that feels like. Well, that's where I feel like that has come through the years of just experiencing and just living into it. Part of it also, as you know, Caroline, my backstory is for 21 years, I took care of my daughter who was born with multiple disabilities. I am not a caretaker by nature at all. I am a mover and a shaker and get this together and move it forward. And having to be with my daughter, who of course I'm her mom, love her to death, but having to do something for 21 years on a continuous basis got harder and harder and harder for me. It helped me realize even in the midst of all of that, I could still be me and I, I could still contribute in small ways. And oftentimes it was just conversations with people, small conversations, I was still being influential. And I think that that was a huge piece of me. It's like the crucible by fire, right? So for me, every single day, it's like, what can I do today? It's not that I don't look forward, but it's also like I am living in the moment. I'm really trying to learn to live in the moment and again, to be authentically me. Everything was stripped away from me. I couldn't pretend to be all together in everything because I was living with my daughter. She was a 24 seven kid. I never knew when she was gonna, she had seizures. So she'd fall into seizures when I'm on a call with somebody. I'm like, I'm so sorry. Sometimes I had to hang up with people because I had to go. What I realized from that is what happened in my relationships is the other people were like, oh my goodness, I can be real with her. I can be honest about, you know, I mean, I'd have people on tears on the other end of the line. I'm like, can you grab a Kleenex because tears are good. Like we had such deep conversations because I had to be real, they met me. And so for me, I realized this whole facade piece just doesn't work for people. It really doesn't. People are looking for a place to be real and to be strong and grow from that. And I do feel like a lot of people looked at me and are like, how do you even deal with it? It's like, I don't know. For me, it's by the grace of God. Every single day, he gave me what I needed to get through. He still does. But that is like, it helped me get that foundation of, I don't need to pretend to be somebody else. I don't need to pretend to have my life all together because the fact of the matter is no one really believes that. No one, do you believe that Oprah has her life completely together? No, we know she doesn't. There have been cracks that have been shown in her crown, right? This is the part of where, again, it's about being who you are. And so for me, living in that place, I have grace for myself. I have grace for other people. It's so much easier. It's not about trying to keep it all together, which as a much younger person, I did. I tried to keep it all together. 
and I couldn't do it. I mean, at one point I was ready to leave my entire life. I was ready to drive off into the sunset. I didn't even know if I wanted to keep being here because I couldn't do it anymore. And it was because it wasn't me. So I don't know if I answered your question, but you know, honestly. Wow, yes, you did. <clears throat> and you know, what's amazing, uh, and I will mention it for people who don't know, is that through everything that happened, you build a huge successful business. Mm -hmm. And I think that you were able to do that because you were real. Mm -hmm. And you know, talking about Oprah here, I will give her grace on something. I never heard her pretending that her life is perfect. No. I think that media pretends that for her, but for yeah. her herself, um, I think she's, you know, she's one of the vulnerable people that can say, uh, no, it's not that easy. And I heard her share so many struggles, but the media makes her like this right. queen with the crown. Exactly. But she didn't which, do it. Which is where, see, again, we're the social media, that's what ends up sort of being out there. And it's like, don't believe it. Don't believe it. I agree that Oprah, I mean, we know where she came from and she's been honest about her story, which is great. But that's the piece we have to realize. These are people. We're all people. No one is perfect. So don't think I can't do anything until I'm perfect, right? And that's the other piece that I have really learned through my years is as I'm struggling, the best way when I am struggling and I am wondering when it's going to get better is for me to reach out and help somebody else. I don't have to have it together before I help someone else. When I help someone, when I don't know how I can help them, but I just interact and be with them, that's when it helps me too. You said so, a huge piece there, because I think that sometimes we don't know the power we can yeah. have in someone's life. So, and we only take our own vision. So we stay back. Like I know amazing people who are like, no, I wouldn't write a book. Who would want to read about that? And I'm like, what? You have an amazing story. But in our perspective, yeah. quite often it's not good enough. So not waiting for it to be good enough yeah. is actually being very generous because, you know, you, you mm -hmm. keep making impact in people's life. And I, you know, anyone who would uh, reach out to you, I am I promise you, you will get so much from talking with Faith, which, you know, I was thinking when you were talking about names and that's totally off subject, but it must have been a bit of pressure, you know, growing up with that name. <laughs> you can be oh. in your corner. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've had. Yeah. And then you add my middle name in and it gets really crazy because my middle name is Evangeline, which means bringing good news. So if you don't think that's. <laughs> high bar. Yeah, I had that thrown in my I didn't like my name when I was a girl. I was a little girl. I wanted something normal and common. Oh. But that's the part of where you know, yes, every single day, I guess that is something that I've grown into. It's one of my gifts anymore. So yes. Yeah. Well, that uh, it's a beautiful name. But yes, mm -hmm. I get what you're saying. Um, but who likes their name when they're little? We always right. think like the other ones, our friends are better. So yes, my my older daughter, her name is Billy, and um, it's Billy Gloria. Mm -hmm. And she was going to school in kindergarten, well, when she started. And then at the parents' teacher interview, the teacher was like, "Yes, and Gloria is really good doing this, and Gloria is." Re and then I was just like, "You know what? I love Gloria, uh, but why are you calling her like that?" Mm -hmm. She said, "Well, she said it's her name," and I'm like, "Uh-uh." <laughs> So she had decided and told everyone in this school in kindergarten that, no, no, you will call me Gloria. <laughs> no, oh, it's just like, it. well, that's interesting. And yeah. now she's happy with the name she has. But yeah, she went through a phase of like totally trying to change it. So bottom line is you need to be you to be happy yes. and successful. And that starts with your name. It was given to you, but just accept it and embrace it. And the rest is accept also the personality you have, the purpose you have. We all have a different one, and that's why we're all needed here. So, exactly. Faith, what would you like to leave everyone with? Your last words of, you know, wisdom as they go on? Oh, boy, that's just like putting me on the spot. Um, <laughs> you know, I think the main thing is about finding what works for you. So especially in business, you know, I've had a lot of people say, well, how am I supposed to do it? It's like, find what works for you. 
if it's face to face, do face to face. If it's virtual, do virtual. If it's a combination of it, do that. If it's texting, if it's calling, it's whatever. It's really about how do you build relationships. And everybody has different gifts and everybody has different ways that they are best at that. Some of it has to be however you can connect with the other person. And I guess that's where I'd encourage people to be flexible in that. But find your niche. Do what you do well. And know you're bringing your best to the world. And you are influencing somebody every single day. You really are. So, yeah. Beautiful. And that's where, if I can just a little plug, I'll just tell you that my uh, website is real to the core, as in R E A L T O T H E C O R E dot com. Anyway, so no specials or anything like that. Go see what I have. Who knows? I mean, this is where I am. I just believe in being real to the core. That's who I am. So whatever is going on, you know, that's it's going to be there. Well, Faith Gallatin, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. And go visit our website. I'm going to put it with the podcast as well. But people watching, you can see it right now. And um, thank you for being here. If you know anyone I should meet and interview, <laughs> please let me know. And, of course, I'm going to finish the whole podcast without my voice. <laughs> no, no, that's great. You. You're fine, Caroline. Thank you so much for doing what you do, because this is you, and I'm so thankful for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you, and I appreciate everyone tuning in. So we'll see you next week. Thank okay. you.